Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hi, everyone. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Brickeen. Friday, I hope everybody's having a great Friday and I hope everybody has a great weekend. Today's show, we're going to talk about the NCAA tournament and we're going to talk about LSU's game today against Iowa State in basketball in in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in the Midwest region. Uh, Also going to talk about LSU baseball against Texas A&M. Just some details, just some some notes you might like. Uh, Some interesting facts about, you know, the the, the matchup with A&M. But let's go into the NCAA tournament. Man, my bracket is really, (laughs) I'm having a tough time. But there's, there's good news and bad news with my bracket. I'll share my bracket to everybody. I know everybody's doing a bracket just about. I picked Kentucky to win their first game. I never would have thought in a million years St. Peter's would have beat Kentucky, really a D2 program. The biggest loss, I think, in, in the Kentucky basketball folklore, especially a good team. I mean, Kentucky's got a good team. But it just goes to show you if you're flat and you don't play well, Anybody can beat you in the NCAA tournament. These are all conference championship teams at all levels. You know, Iowa, I had picked Iowa to win. They lost to Richmond. I never thought Iowa would lose their first-round game. They got a good team as well. Indiana, I picked Indiana. They lost to St. Mary's, which, you know, that was me picking the underdog, you know, but besides that, I, I was pretty clean. Uh, UConn, I picked UConn to win, but New Mexico State won. I was going with the underdog, upset there, and lost. Besides that, my bracket's pretty clean. And I'll just share with everybody who I picked to go to the Final Four. In the West, I picked Gonzaga. In the South region, I picked Villanova. In the East region, I picked Purdue. In the Midwest, my sleeper Cinderella team is Creighton. Creighton won yesterday in overtime. Thank you, Creighton. So my four Final Four teams are still in it. Most of my teams for the Final Eight and 16 are still in it because I did not pick Kentucky to go to to the Final Eight or Iowa. I know a lot of people pick Kentucky to go deep. I really – I didn't pick Kentucky. I had Purdue beating Kentucky in the second round, which is not going to happen. So now Purdue's probably going to make it, I think. And I'll tell you, there was a lot of close games yesterday. UCLA barely won their game. Arkansas, you know, barely won their game. There were a lot of close games yesterday. You know, Providence had to fight for their, their win. Michigan State, you know, a lot of, lot of, tough, a lot of tough wins yesterday. Um, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about LSU's basketball game tonight against Iowa State, and then we'll talk about LSU, Texas A&M baseball. I'll break that down, and I hope you enjoy the show. It's going to be pretty, you know, probably about 20, 25 minutes, and it'll be pretty inform- informative, you know, and I'm just having fun with this NCAA tournament. Uh, talking about the uh, the brackets, you know, and then by the time you hear the show, some of you might have seen all the games today, which is Friday. So uh, we'll be back. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the show. We're going to talk about LSU-Iowa State basketball, the uh, NCAA tournament game today for LSU against Iowa State, which is going to be a pretty good game, I think. Uh, First of all, I want to thank one of our sponsors, John Harvey Toyota. If you're looking for a used car, Harvey Autos has three dealerships, which means three times the used vehicles. They've got everything from fuel-efficient compacts to luxury models, even hybrids, and certified pre-owned with a warranty. Check out John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, or Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Tell them Lee sent you. Uh, Let's talk about LSU-Iowa State. 
you know, this is in the Midwest region, which is going to be actually wasn't a bad wasn't a bad seed for LSU for being a six seed. You know, they got eleven seed Iowa State, which has got a lot of injuries. That's what I want to point out to all the listeners. One of the top players for Iowa State's out for the game, Trey King, who's six seven two forty. So that means LSU has a chance to win the rebounding. Which, if you can re- you can rebound, you know LSU usually wins games they can rebound offensively. Here's another tidbit: Iowa State has three other players that are questionable for the game. So that's possibly four of their top ten players might not play in this game. That's something to look at. Iowa State is twenty and twelve on the season. They play some tough teams, man. Baylor. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Kansas. Eight of their opponents are in the NCAA tournament. So their record's very deceiving. LSU comes in at 22-11 and 11 on the season. This is the first time these two schools have ever met in basketball. It's pretty interesting. It's in Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the game, the Midwest region. The game is going to kick off at 6.20 p.m. I think LSU is going to win the game. That's my pick. I do not think LSU will go past this round, but I think it's a very big game for the program. And I think a lot of listeners would agree. And the reason I say it's a big game for the program, you might say, Lee, why are you saying that? It'll stop all the negative talk, and it'll make these kids feel good that are thinking of leaving. They might stay. If they can win one game, these kids grow tight, man. They they, they establish a bond. And even if you lose the next game, you get a second game in the NCAA tournament, which means another week, which means these kids get to stick together. Also, if you're looking for a coach, It continues the season where Scott Wilbert has more time to find a coach, and these kids are still playing, and they're not thinking of leaving. The longer they last in the NCAA tournament, the better LSU is to getting a coach without losing players. You keep winning, you keep your team together, and and these kids are not going to start transferring out. That's the key to winning today to give Woodward another week to try and find a coach, which leads to my coaching search opinion. I'm pretty sure that Scott Woodward has an idea what's going to happen to LSU in basketball as far as the penalties, the final toll from the NCAA. They usually get that before it's shared with the public. And I'm thinking, I'm guessing by watching how everything's happened in the last three years to, like, Arizona, Kansas, Louisville, Auburn. You know, a lot of teams that have gotten in trouble, probably not as uh, portrayed as heavily in the public eye as they've done with Will Wade, which is unfortunate. Some of these writers just love talking about the LSU stuff more than these other teams that also – cheat it. I think LSU, if the if the probation's one year of no postseason, let's just say it's one year of no postseason, no NCAA tournament, no NIT, maybe losing a couple of scholarships, which hurts. That would be the best case scenario. And if that happens, if it's just one year, you can still get an elite coach. But if they get a two-year ban, postseason ban, and three scholarships lost over two seasons, you've gonna you got a different kind of coach you're going to be able to get. You're going to either have to get a retired-type coach that's got a big name just to bring kids in and keep it going, or in my opinion, you're going to get a really young coach, a really unknown coach that's maybe at a great program, like a Duke or a – North Carolina or Kansas, just a young green coach that might work out. Kind of like the Will Wade thing when they hired Will Wade. He was a young green coach that really didn't have a lot of experience. 
and I was a fan of Will Wade with his energy and what he did for LSU. But you got to pay the price if you make mistakes like this. And that's what happens in college sports. You've got to be able to survive mistakes, and he just wasn't able to survive it. I thought he might would survive it after four years, but it didn't happen. So the fan base has to move on, and I think a victory today will help a lot of the pain, and it'll get the media from talking about all the negativity, and the fan base will actually get positive, and the players and the fans. The key is the players. They need to stick together another week, which will help the coaching search. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about LSU baseball and Texas A&M. I just found some key facts that you might enjoy about the LSU-Texas A&M baseball series this week at Alex Box in Baton Rouge, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, starting tonight. Starting at 6.30 tonight at LSU. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I hope you're enjoying the show. I'm Lieber Keen, your host. And I want to mention this because I keep forgetting to do it. Because I'm in that generation that's still trying to learn how to do Twitter. I just got Twitter a week ago. So if you're listening and you're any age, follow me at Twitter at Lee Burkeen. It's my name, Lee, L-E-E, Burkeen, B-R-E-C-H, double E, two E's, N as in Nancy. Pretty easy. That's my Twitter handle. Follow me there. Follow our show and like our show on YouTube, and also in the app world on Podbean to get three shows a week. We had a great show earlier this week with the legendary coach Lynn LeBlanc that won a state title in 1965 with LaRose Cutoff High School, which is now South Lafouche High School. We also recognize it's National Trainers Month Athletic Trainers Month, like they told us. Not trainer, Athletic Trainers Month around the country. And we recognized athletic trainers in Louisiana. I was really happy to do that and explain how hard it is to get a trainer, an athletic trainer for your school, and on the high school level especially. Deanna Malonso joined us um, from the Brock Foundation she did a great job. And we also had Tyler Kimball, a big 6'5", 280-pound O-lineman from Denham Springs High School, class of 223. So you want to go back and watch that show either on Podbean, YouTube. Like I said, if you like us and follow us or follow me on Twitter at Libra Keen, you can get all the updates on our shows every week. We're going to have a great week next week, too. Oh, man, we got some great guests coming up the next three weeks. Some great people coming on. And we're going to continue to dig and get some of these other sports programs on. And, and just it's educating me on the other things that go on besides football. I want to thank another sponsor before we get into LSU baseball with A&M. <clears throat> I want to thank Medine's Collision Center. Locally owned and operated since the 1960s, located on 5275 Kincaid Avenue in Baton Rouge. You can give them a call at 357-7983, area code 225. They're your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. If you need your car painted or truck or you need some, some body work, please give them a call. They're great people. Chris and Dominica Medine do a wonderful job. They're great people. And they'll take care of your, your car or truck with any paint jobs or body work you need driving these rough roads in Louisiana. It can, it can be uh, continuously a job and it's a, that you need work on continuously with your cars. Trust me, I know I'm, I'm on the road all the time like a lot of coaches and you know a lot of people that listen to this show that travel. Let's get to LSU basketball one more time before LSU baseball. I want to 
Um, I've already covered about the coaching search and the players, but I wanted to recognize Tori Eason. As a fan, as an LSU basketball fan, as a basketball fan, I really enjoyed watching this kid this year, not just playing for LSU, but his effort and his his IQ of the game and the way he's finished basically about 15 to 20 of LSU's games this year. And unfortunately, he'll probably be a first-round pick for LSU, but fortunately for the kid, he's going to make a lot of money with just his second year out of high school, transferring in from Cincinnati, but he's from Los Angeles, California. At six foot eight, 215, 220 pounds, he is one of, he's become one of the fav- my favorite players to ever play at LSU. I put him in the top ten. What he does at the free throw line, what he does dunking, what he does shooting the three, when he does shoot the three, and in transition, nobody's funner to watch <clears throat> than Tari Eason. And that's why LSU's got a chance to advance. I think this kid's going to go crazy in the first round against Iowa State since they're hurting some of their bigs being out. We're going to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about LSU baseball in Texas A&M. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. The number to call is 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. We're going to talk about LSU and Texas A&M baseball. I, I went out and got some notes on this game. And the first thing I thought of is let's look at how many Louisiana natives on the Texas A&M baseball team. There's usually always a couple, but guess what? There's none. For the first time in many years, there's not one Louisiana native playing for Texas A&M baseball. A lot of this, a lot of that is because they, had, they were in transition. They got a new coach. Their new coach, Schwarzenegger, came over from TCU, who did a phenomenal job with them. But a and a very young team. <clears throat> They're so young, they start a true freshman pitcher on the mound tonight who's got a really good ERA, but he hasn't pitched a lot. To me, he's very unproven. This is a great way for LSU to come out and hit some home runs and put up a lot of runs in the Friday night matchup tonight at 6.30 p.m. So there's no Louisiana natives on the Texas a and baseball team for the first time I can remember. Here's another interesting stat. One of their best players is a transfer from Arizona State by the name of Jack Moss. He's 6'5", 205 pounds. He's an outfielder, infielder, wherever they want to put him. He's batting 359. He's a sophomore. And guess who came over from Arizona State this year to LSU? Pitching coach Jason Kelly. So LSU's very aware of Jack Moss. So they, you know, scouting report-wise, they're on top of this. You would think Coach Kelly probably even recruited him to Arizona State. It's pretty interesting. He ended up at Texas A&M. Another stat that I think you would find really, really likable is that Jack, you know, Jacob Berry that came over from uh, Arizona with Coach Jay Johnson. Jacob Berry is leading the SEC, I think, in home runs right now. <clears throat> He's really a good player. He went to Queen Creek High School in Arizona. Well, guess what? Texas A&M has a player by the name of Cole Kaler, who's a graduate transfer, third-team All-American in 2020. He went to Queen Creek High School in Arizona. They were teammates in high school. So you wouldn't think there would be a lot of Arizona connections with A&M and LSU, but there you go. We're going to take another break, and we come back. I'm going to talk. We're going to talk a little bit more about LSU, Texas A&M. Talk about LSU's pitching situation right now with Blake Money being out probably this weekend, possibly the whole weekend to be safe. And we'll talk about some uh, some final thoughts. We'll be right back. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. 
Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Before we get back to LSU, Texas a and baseball, I want to thank a couple of more sponsors. Treads and Care Tire Company in Baton Rouge, locally owned and operated by Devin Holly. They're on the corner of Hooper Road and Park Place Drive in Central. They've been in business since 1971. They have every tire brand you can imagine. They also have a free pickup and delivery. They do brakes. They do all changes, alignments, air conditioning. They do it all. Give them a call. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Since 1971, they have been in business. The number to call is 331-8144. That's 331-8144. And also, I want to thank Gage. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help you with your business get better connected with Gage. And we're going to thank some other sponsors before we end the show when we come back with another se- we got another segment after this, but Getting back to LSU baseball, here's a note that you might like. One of LSU's signees in 2020, Tom Biggs from West Monroe, you might have remembered him, an outfielder. A couple of months ago, re-signed with Stephen F. Austin in the Southland Conference. Just a little tidbit you might want to know. Tom Biggs was all-state out of West Monroe, was batting over 350 in high school. <clears throat> Sometimes it just doesn't work out. And he's now at Stephen F. Austin, Tom Biggs from West Monroe, former LSU signee in baseball. You know, Blake Money, I think they're I think if I was guessing, they're gonna hold him out all weekend. I'm just assuming that. I've got a just a hunch that they're gonna hold him out just to be safe. Nothing serious. Just to be safe. You gotta be safe. But I think LSU's gonna be okay. I think they're going to be okay. I think against A&M, I think they got a chance to sweep these guys. Mikhail Hilliard's pitching really good. Garrett Edwards is a better pitcher than last year. Grant Taylor, the true freshman from Florence, Alabama, has got great stuff, man. He throws 97, 98 miles an hour, consistently 93. Grant Taylor's going to be the next All-American pitcher, I think, at LSU. True freshman. He might even get a start in the rotation this weekend against Texas A&M. Ty Floyd's doing well. You know, he didn't do great against uh, his, in his last outing, but he's well. He did do great in his last outing. The outing before that against Texas, um, or was it Baylor? He he didn't do too well. But you know, hey, it's baseball. It's a lot of games. I think he's a better pitcher. He throws ninety three consistently. He's got another pitch this year besides the fastball. I think Ty Floyd's going to be fine. Eric Reiselman it looked phenomenal the other day against Tulane. I mean, he struck out like the first six of the seven batters he faced in just two innings of work, throws 98, consistently 95, can throw 100 miles an hour, which is incredible. You got the old reliable Devin Fontenot from the Woodlands, Texas, year six, who's always going to throw 92, 93 for you, and he's got three pitches. Paul Gervais has done a great job, the big six-foot nine pitcher. From North Carolina, he throws 92-3. Only has really one pitch. He works on a second one, but look, I think he's a good pitcher. And the freshman from Alabama who was on our podcast last year, Samuel Dutton, who's out of Birmingham, Alabama, I think he's going to be a great one for LSU. I think the staff's there, and the hitting's going to be even – they're going to get better hitting. Once Duga, once Jake – once Duga starts hitting, they're going to be unstoppable. I think the team will get better as the season goes on. My prediction, and it always usually happens this way in baseball, but by the fourth series in the SEC, the fourth series, we're going to see what LSU, (coughs) excuse me, I need to get some water. We're going to see what LSU has. If they can avoid the injury bug to any more pitchers, I think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to host a regional this year, possibly. And I can see this team getting Omaha. They're not Omaha ready right now, but I think they could get to Omaha in the end because there's a lot of open territory this year. You know, Mississippi State's down. There's a lot of teams that are not as strong. The only team I've seen this year that is 
better than everybody else is the University of Texas. Their two starters, Friday and Saturday, throw 95 consistently. They're both first-round picks. They have two first-round pick relievers. Their third starter will be a first-round pick. Their pitching is a lot better than LSU's right now, but I think LSU has a chance to be very good in the end. And Texas lost some games. I mean, it's baseball. I mean, they lost the other day. They've lost two or three games this year. So, I mean, they're they're not perfect, but they've got, to me, and I think a lot of people would agree, one of the best teams in college baseball right now because of their pitching, the University of Texas Longhorns. We're going to take a break and come right back for one more quick segment. We'll be right back. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. I want to thank another sponsor a great sponsor of ours, a new sponsor this year, Gros Savon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Gros Savon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours. Located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, give them a call to book your next fishing trip or hunting trip. I'm telling you, you'll, you will not regret it. I've been on one trip, and I am sold for life. I don't think I can fish anywhere else. They have saltwater and freshwater fishing, but the number to call to book your trip with these guys, overnight lodging, is 337-598-2357 or go to www.grosssavon.com for more information. You'll have the time of your life. Take your kids, take your, your coworkers, take your wife if she likes to fish, take your dad, your parents. I mean, had the time of my life fishing, caught over 75 bass in just three hours. Now, it's a catch and release, but it's the one of the funnest days you'll have in your life. Gross Savon Lodge. I uh, want to go ahead, and we're going to end the show this segment, but I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope everybody has a great weekend. And again, I want to recognize Athletic Trainers Month for the United States. It gets lost, you know, because it's NCAA tournament. You got college baseball. You got spring football starting up for football, college, and high school. You got women's basketball tournament. And there's a lot going on. But want to recognize those hard working athletic trainers in our country that if we didn't have them, we wouldn't be able to play a football game, have a scrimmage, or have a practice. They take care of our kids when they get hurt. And uh, I want to say thank you to those guys. And I really enjoy watching them, you know, unfortunately, they're always called upon when there's an injury, you know, or they're on the sideline hoping they're not called, you know, hoping their name's not called to help, you know, because it's they're always trying to make sure these kids are uh, in, a, in a position to be okay. And, I, you know, again, I want to recognize that it's National Athletic Trainers Month for the United States. And if you need any information as a high school to get with Brock Foundation, they do a great job of raising money to pay for trainers and to make it happen. That's Brock, B-R-O-C, Foundation, uh, which serves most of South Louisiana and might, you know, eventually go North Louisiana to our North Louisiana listeners or get with whoever you have in North Louisiana that has a foundation for athletic trainers for your school, whether it's middle school, high school, or junior high. I hope everybody has a great weekend again, and we'll see you on Monday. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.